So we were talking about the mechanisms of hypoxia and response to oxygen. First of all, we discussed that if there is less oxygen, partial pressure or less percentage of oxygen in the inspired air, right, then supplemental oxygen is good, right. Then we were talking about in patient of COPD, right, they are hypoventilating, oxygen is good. But there is something very important that when we give oxygen to them, we have to be very, very careful. Why? Because in COPD patients, patient who are having chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, right, they are chronically hypoventilating. Due to that reason, they are having hypoxemia plus hypercapnia. Low oxygen is called hypoxemia and chronically and high level of carbon dioxide in the blood is called hypercapnia. These patients of COPD have chronically low oxygen and high carbon dioxide in the blood. Now, all of you must be knowing that normally carbon dioxide is a strong stimulant to respiratory system. Normally carbon dioxide is a strong stimulant to respiratory system. But if some patient is chronically hypoventilating, then carbon dioxide sensitivity of neurons to carbon dioxide drive is lost. Listen again. If someone has chronic pulmonary obstructive disease, patient has chronically hypoxemia and hypercapnia. In acute situation, hypercapnia is a very good driver of inspiratory center. But if you have prolonged hypercapnia, then inspiratory centers become insensitive to the raised carbon dioxide, right? So it means in patient with COPD, hypercapnia is not the real driver of inspiratory center. So inspiratory centers in patient on COPD are responding only to hypoxemia. Is that right? So inspiratory drive in patient with COPD is not hypercapnia, but it is only hypoxemia. And if you really give good concentration of oxygen, you simply eliminate the hypoxemia, actually you eliminate the driver to inspiratory center and patient may go into respiratory arrest. Is that right? That is why in patient with chronic obstructive AOA diseases, you have to be very careful when you give oxygen, right? Usually we give oxygen in a very severe asthma of that type, which is of acute onset. For example, there are people who have asthma intermittently, once in a six month attack, right? So if someone from last six months was not having asthma and now today morning he had a very severe attack due to exposure to a particular allergen, in that case you can give oxygen. Is that right? Now let's come back. Yes? I, I don't get it. You, you can't understand. Or what thing you couldn't understand? Um, why is it... Uh... Why it's important to be careful when you give oxygen to a patient with COPD? Yes. Okay, let me repeat it again. Look, this is inspiratory neurons. Is that right? Inspiratory neurons are the real driver of the inspiratory effort or ventilatory effort. Clear? Now these neurons are very, very sensitive to protons. Is that right? Any patient who has chronic obstructive airway disease. Chronic means for long time, not episodic. Right? If someone is chronically obstructed, it means chronically exchange of alveolar air with atmospheric air is less due to this obstruction. It means patient is chronically hypoventilating. If patient is chronically hypoventilating, there will be two results. Number one, there will be less oxygen here and less oxygen in the blood. That is hypoxemia. Number two, there will be increased carbon dioxide accumulation here because carbon dioxide is not being exchanged with the fresh air. Right? And there will be increased carbon dioxide level in the blood. So these patients who are chronically having hypoventilation, they develop low level of oxygen, partial pressure of oxygen, which is called hypoxemia. And chronically elevated level of carbon dioxide in the blood, which is called hypercapnia. Is that right? Now, actually respiratory centers are more sensitive to the elevated carbon dioxide than to the low oxygen. Statement number one, right? In acute phases, 
respiratory centers or inspiratory centers are more sensitive to carbon dioxide than to oxygen. Is that right? Now, actually they are not really sensitive to carbon dioxide. Basically, carbon dioxide crosses the blood-brain barrier and bind with the water, make carbonic acid which dissociate into bicarb and protons. Actually, inspiratory neurons are extremely sensitive to protons. And of course, whenever there is more carbon dioxide going to CNS, more protons are generated there and inspiratory efforts become more. Is that right? But the problem is, if someone has chronically elevated carbon dioxide level in the blood, then inspiratory center become des desensitized, less sensitive to the carbon dioxide drive. So what does it mean? That, listen, that in acute elevation of carbon dioxide in the blood, hypercapnia is the wonderful driver of inspiratory center. Hypercapnia can drive the inspiratory center only for a short time. If there is chronically there is elevated carbon dioxide, then inspiratory center becomes resistant to the stimulation by the carbon dioxide. So hypercapnia remains there, but it is no more in chronic cases a drive, real driver of the inspiratory neurons. Claro? Now. So what is driving? You know, patients who have asthma, they still are doing inspiratory effort. So in the long run, it is not retained carbon dioxide which drives those inspiratory efforts. Those inspiratory efforts are basically maintained by hypoxemia. That is the low level of oxygen in the blood. Is that right? Because inspiratory systems do not develop desensitization to hypoxic drive. They do develop desensitization to hypercapnic drive. Am I clear? So, what really drives inspiratory center in a patient with COPD is hypoxia. Now, if you give him a very good supply of oxygen, you basically eliminate hypoxia. And as soon as you eliminate hypoxia, respiratory, inspiratory neurons were used to work with hypoxia driven situation. You eliminate hypoxia, you eliminate the drive for neurons. Is that right? And there is respiratory arrest. Am I clear? No problem? Okay, let's move forward. Respiratory pump failure we discussed. Again, there's hyperventilation and supply of... Yes, you have one more question? Yeah, but why is it that oxygen becomes toxic sometimes when you, like, when you give pure oxygen to the patient with COPD? They say that they might kill the patient. Why, why is that? Uh, she is asking a question that uh, when there is somewhere she has uh, read or heard that in COPD patient, if you give oxygen, you will kill the patient. Again, I will repeat that in COPD patient, the real driver of uh, inspiratory centers are hypoxia. When you give the oxygen, actually oxygen simply eliminates the hypoxia, which was the real driver of those inspiratory neurons and neurons are no more driven, no more stimulated and they block their activity and that leads to respiratory arrest. Is that right? Then the concept of oxygen toxicity is a different thing. We'll discuss sometimes else that if uh, someone is given 100% pure oxygen for a long time, it produces complications, right? Especially in the infant, they produce uh, retro lenticular hypo... Yeah. Pardon? Retro? Oh no, not erythroblastosis vitalis. It means you should know what is erythroblastosis vitalis. Actually, retro-lenticular fibrohypoplasia. We'll talk about that somewhere else, not now. Let's concentrate on more causes of hypoxia.